I'm driving 500 kilometers today from Tokyo to Osaka, but what's more is we're doing it in this. A 2022 Nissan GTR Nismo Special Edition. That, that's a mouthful. And we're gonna have some fun with this today. Probably the nicest car I've ever driven, both outside and in. Like this is the inside of the car. Both speakers, paddle shifters. We're gonna have a fun time driving to Osaka. Let's get on the road. So it is eight o'clock in the morning. We have a full tank of gas, blue skies, an amazing car, and a really long drive ahead of us. <laughs> I feel like today's gonna be fun. But I love a good drive, so I am here for it. You can also see the tip of Mount Fuji today. You imagine the roads and highways of Tokyo being very crowded in the morning, but everybody's trying to get into Tokyo. So leaving Tokyo is relatively easy. That side right now, complete traffic jam. Nothing but clear roads ahead of me. It is only 8.30 a.m. and I've already hit my first traffic jam of the day. <laughs> it's gonna be a long ride today. Hey, another GTR. I have been in this traffic jam for over 20 minutes now. And the irony of it happening right after I said that it's easy to get out of Tokyo because all the traffic's on the other. And there's a, there's a dinosaur on top of that hotel. And that one is shaped like a boat. With, is that a pirate? I think it's a pirate. It was a pirate. It has been an hour and that traffic jam is, <laughs> is not letting up, so we're making a brief stop. Also, this service area has warning signs <laughs> for Black Widow spiders. I completely forgot Japan even had Black Widow spiders. And as much as I'd love to show off the service area, some of these now are no cameras. And according to the truck driver, Kana, that I did a video with, this one is kind of mean about it. Coffee mission complete. It is almost 10 o'clock in the morning. We are almost on to hour three. Come to think of it though, the last big road trip adventure we would have done would have been what, over two years ago when we took that tiny camper van through the countryside of Japan, visiting as many spots as we could in a week. It has been that long since I've been able to go out and do a road trip. This is not my GTR, by the way. Nissan actually lent this to me for a week. Like the company of Nissan was like, hey, do you want to try out a GTR for a Yes, I do. I've been driving it around Tokyo for the past couple days now. It is so much fun, but attracts way too much attention. I love how smooth it rides. We're doing about 110 right now. The speed limit on this section of the highway is 120, but you have to be really careful because the speedometer on this thing goes up to 340 and 100 is way down at the bottom. In this city, it's not that bad because you're just following the traffic, but on the highway, if you are not careful, you're I can see Mount Fuji ahead of us too. And despite having such a fun car, we're not gonna be going particularly crazy today. Obvious safety issues aside, Japanese police are also running their fall campaign right now and handing out as many tickets as they possibly can. And quite frankly, I, I don't need that. Just don't need it. And they're kind of sneaky about it too. I once got handed a ticket for going over a yellow line that I did not go over and had drive cam footage for. And the officer told me that I could contest it in court, but it would take me months of my life. And while I may not pay the fine, I would still lose the points on my license that I lost them the second he handed me the ticket. Reviewed the drive cam footage. I didn't cross the yellow line. I was so frustrated and heartbroken, but I guess, I guess that's something you kind of deal with anywhere in the world, so. Spend the last hour or so just enjoying the car. The sound system is incredible, way too much fun. But I am <laughs> starting to get hungry. We're in Shizuoka right now, near Hamamatsu, at a service area. It is about 12.15 right now, and we're about halfway. 
Very tempted to get katsu or fried pork cutlet, but that <laughs> might be a little bit heavy considering how much driving we have left. I'll go simple and grab a beef bowl from Matsuya. Inflation in Japan hasn't been crazy, but a bowl of gyudon from Matsuya used to cost 290 yen and now costs 450, but still not a bad meal for 450 yen. It was also my go-to meal for like my first 10 years in Japan. First meal when I get in the country, last meal before I leave. I lived off this stuff for far too long. That was, <laughs> that was exactly what I needed. And the fun part of the drive starts now. Also, there's a shower room, laundry, and a Pokemon card crane game. Okay, you know, we're gonna take a quick peek at this rest stop while we give some love to our sponsor, NordVPN. You might know NordVPN, you might even be using them already, but in case you're new to VPNs and what they can do, the simplest explanation is that they can make your computer or device look like it's accessing the internet from another country or location, which can be particularly helpful in, for example, accessing streaming content that may not be available in your country. But I use it for two main things. Number one is anytime I'm attached to public Wi-Fi, the encryption of the VPN and helps keep your data safe and without it it's essentially like being out in the wild wild west and number two still can't find that shower by the way is anytime that i'm booking travel as using a vpn to make it look like you are booking from within the country you're hoping to travel to has the potential of yielding cheaper flight and hotel results i assume that the shower would be near the restrooms but such was not the case. Where is this? Now I keep NordVPN on all of my devices and if you want to give it a shot you can use my link in the description box down below along with the code TOKYOLENS to give yourself a two-year plan at a huge discount as well as four extra months for free. Best part is that NordVPN has a 30-day money-back guarantee meaning you can try it risk-free. That is the end of our ad segment and I, I think the shower is in this very unassuming shop here. They have onigiri and bento over here. And then this is the shower area. 10 minutes for 300 yen. First time to see that. Back on the road. I typically like to do most of my Japan road trips at night. You get empty roads, no traffic, arrive early in the morning to areas completely void of people, enjoy the space, and then rest during the day. There's a small part of me that actually feels this might be the single best way to enjoy Japan, and potentially the only way to still do it without crowds. You do then sacrifice seeing a lot of the beautiful mountains and scenery that you would get while driving through the day, but I still just think it's worth it. Like as tips go, you can take it or leave it, but I have managed to explore some of Japan's most beautiful areas completely empty. Even super crowded touristy areas like Kyoto can still be enjoyed nearly empty if you explore them early enough or in some cases even late enough. I want this car. You would think after this many hours of driving I'd be tired, but I am loving this. But parking for my building is between 80 and 90,000 yen a month, so owning a car doesn't look like it's in the cards anytime in the near future. But on the plus side, that's enabled me to experience a lot of different vehicles in Japan, while simultaneously probably saving me a ton of money. But we're less than 100 kilometers from Osaka now, which means we are on our final leg and running out of daylight. It is exactly 4 p.m. and we're almost in Osaka. I'm probably gonna be getting up the highway soon, which is perfect because I'm almost out of fuel. I'm almost out of the thought of the drive ending. But I got my first car, I made up every single excuse I could just to go driving. <laughs> Pick up friends, I'd run errands for my parents, I'd go buy them milk. This has kind of given me that same feel. And I'm already like, what, well, where's my next opportunity to drive? Okay, 
We made it. That is Dotonbori right in front of us and not a moment too soon. The gas tank is almost completely empty. Mind you, I didn't think we'd actually be able to make it all the way to Osaka on a single tank of gas. So, if anything, I'm, I'm impressed, but the next mission is to find a gas station. actually put a high octane marker on the car here. I have never seen that one before. For some reason they only put in 20 liters which came to 4,000 yen. But there's no way that that's even half a tank. So I <laughs> those eight miles. There we go. 7,000 yen here, 4,000 yen here, 11,000 yen in gas. So at the highway we're up to 23,000 yen for this trip. If you think about it, that and the uh, little bit of traffic we had at the beginning were the only hiccups we had in this entire trip. That's, <laughs> we survived. And it is exactly 5 p.m. right now. We got from Tokyo to Osaka at a relaxed pace with rest stops, food, and everything in in nine hours. I'll turn that off. And now comes the big challenge because what I'm shooting next, I'm actually a little afraid of. It's actually this here. This area of Osaka is famously dangerous. Japanese people even call it the slum of Japan. But that's going to be a story for next time. So thanks for joining today and I'll see you again real soon. Okay, I literally just recorded my opening here. I put my hat on this pole and some guy just put it on and went off. When I went to go after him, he started screaming at me. So 